Happy birthday to Lindsay. Happy birthday to Lindsay. Happy birthday, dear Lindsay. Happy birthday to Lindsay. Oh, that's good. Mm. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend made that special for me because I just found out I am allergic to dairy stuff. And so that was a Reese's cup homemade with not milk chocolate because Reese's has been my favorite snack since I was five. And peanuts are my favorite thing ever. So, yay! It was delicious. Thank you, Janelle. But, we're not here to talk about desserts. No, we're here to talk about a movie. And if my birthday wish came true, that was a good movie. For 50 years, we have labored peacefully to secure the vote for women. We've been ridiculed, battered, and ignored. Punish those responsible, whatever way you can. <laughs> Mama! All my life, I've done what men told me. Well, I can't have that anymore. Took my love, took it down. I incite the women in Britain to rebellion. Can I sail through the changing ocean tides? Can I handle the seasons of my life? We break windows. We burn things. Because war's the only language men listen to. Well, I've been afraid of changing. There's nothing left but to stop you. Built my we're in every home. We're half the human race. You can't stop us all. But time makes you bolder, even you change. might lose your life before this is over. I'm getting older, too. We will win. I take my love, take it down. Never surrender. Never give up the fight. In the snow covered hills. But before we can get into the review proper, I need to disclose a couple of things about myself and this movie. Number one, that song playing over that large trailer chunk I just made y'all sit through is Landslide, which was written by Stevie Nicks from the band Fleetwood Mac whose lead guitarist was a dude named Lindsay Buckingham. Pretty awesome, right? But you're asking, okay, cool. You share a name with this guy from this band that originally did this song. Why does that matter? Why do we care? Well, the answer is number two. For those that don't know, Suffragette tells the story of the suffrage movement, which, during the first chunk of the 20th century, fought to get women the right to vote in England. And one of, if not the most famous leaders of this political movement was a woman named Emmeline Pankhurst. And if that last name, Pankhurst, sounds familiar to you, you've probably been paying attention to the t-shirt I am wearing, and yes, I am related to her. Not by blood i'm pretty sure it's either by marriage or distant cousins or something like that but we are related in some capacity and between that and the fact that my first namesake has a song connection to the trailer means i'm just pre-programmed to love this movie and there's not a damn thing i can do about it because even without all that name shenanigans this is a great fucking movie if we allow women to vote, it will mean the loss of social structure. Vote for women! Vote for women! Vote for women! Everything about this movie, from the acting to the writing to the technical whatnots, makes this easily one of the best movies of the year. And I could just list reason after reason after reason. But instead, I'm going to focus on the thing that really blew this one out of the water for me. It's socio-political commentaries. Come on, come on, seriously, this is nothing new. This is what I do on this show. Don't, 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 put that down, put it down, put it down. Anyway, you see the thing about Suffragette is that while it is set 103 years ago, 
during the women's suffrage movement, it's not really about that. This The purpose of this movie isn't just to go, hey guys, the women's suffrage movement was a huge thing at a time when it kind of sucked to be a woman. This movie is about comparing the past, you know, 103 years ago, to today. And while it's not saying that women haven't advanced at all, no, it, it definitely not. It is saying, though, that the fight is still going on. That while things are better than they were 100 years ago, they still aren't necessarily ideal. Take, for example, a scene in this movie where the main character talks about her working conditions at the laundromat type thing that she works at and how her pay, even though she works more hours, is less than that of her male peers. How even though she works longer and harder than men in similar positions to her, she is paid less because she is a woman. Think about that and then compare that to last year in 2014 when a bill was introduced to the Senate that would force across the board all around the country employers to pay women the same as men. And what happened? Every member of the Republican Party, every single Republican senator voted against the bill and it died. Meaning that the events of this movie 103 years ago are the exact same as right now in 2015. Think on that. Then, once you're done with that, think about how this movie talks about how our lead character had to work after she gave birth to her son. How she would have to get him in this backpack rig and take him into work in the dangerous laundromat and have him around her all day long as she was working. And then remember that the United States is one of, well, it's actually pretty much the only industrialized country in the world that does not require employers to give its employees paid maternity leave. Just think about that. 103 years ago, the events of this movie take place, and it's the exact same issue. Women have to decide when they give birth, you know, how is this going to affect their their professional future? Yeah, you know, it's different jobs today than it was back then, but it's still the same issue. The fact that women aren't allowed to, you know, give birth to a child, give birth to the future of mankind, allow our species to continue to exist and not have to risk losing their job or dipping deeply into their savings or having to go into credit card debt and things like that. This is 2015 and it's the same issue as in 1912. I could keep going, but I'd rather leave a few little gems of surprise in there for people that do manage to see this movie. And when I say manage to see this movie, I'm being very literal, because this movie is having a tiny, pathetically small release right now. Like, I live in Los Angeles, and there's only two theaters within 15 miles of me that are showing this movie. I mean, just what the hell? But hey, if nothing else, it does exist. I did get to see it. I did get to see a movie with my ancestor being played by Meryl Streep of all things. That is just so awesome. And even though it's not doing great business in the States due to that tiny release worldwide, it's doing pretty good and has almost made back its budget already. And considering that this is probably gonna clean up once awards season comes along i mean i don't know if it's gonna win things but it's gonna get nominated which will get more people to see it or at least want to see it which will get it more of a release so more people can see it so the future looks bright for this movie that is fucking amazing so if you have the chance to see it now do it otherwise you'll probably get a chance to see it at the end of the year or sometime next year before the oscars either way this is a great movie this was a great way to spend my birthday. I am so happy right now. I'm a little delirious because it's four in the morning, so I'm going to go in a minute here, but I just want to say one more time that Suffragette is amazing. And I will see you guys next time. Peace!